And sure enough, when we looked in the literature, we could find a lot of evidence that metformin reduced cancer growth. It reduces the risk of all forms of cancer in diabetic patients. It extends the lifespan of, this is a mouse breast cancer model. It, uh, this is another mouse breast cancer model, and femformin's a chemical cousin of metformin. So there's a lot of uh, literature out there suggesting that, yeah, metformin is good for health. So we were happy about those results, and we're following up on them. So let me change to uh, now, and just what about the direct screening for effects on lifespan? And we've used Drosophila to do that. And we, we do it, uh, we've developed through a lot of work a very low volume way of screening drugs so we can buy chemical libraries and then screen them, run them through our Drosophila screening assay for lifespan effects and so have a rapid throughput identification of drugs and their effects on lifespan. So I'll just tell you, summarize, we screened about 250 compounds to date. About 130 of those were things that were non-randomly selected and about uh, the others were, were things that we just got in looking through libraries. Uh, we verified uh, 43 positives so far doing dose response curves. Ten others are being the verifications in progress. Um, we're testing the effects on food intake because it's possible some of these drugs could be insect repellents or taste bad and the flies don't want to eat them and so they're calorie restricted. And we're also doing some mechanistic studies of uh, the possible uh, or probable role of these in extending lifespan. And here's just an example of the data. Here was the control in this screen and here were these two concentrations of a drug that we were screening from a chemical library. And over here we did a dose response curve and this drug verified that it actually does extend lifespan of the flies. Then I'll switch over to mice. We've got 60 treatment groups and we used an unbalanced statistical design so that we can have a big control group and then relatively fewer in the, each treatment group, so that increases the number of treatments we could use. We've used males only. We started the treatments at 12 months of age. We use a chemically defined diet. We feed them daily, so they're getting their drug every day. And uh, our power specifications are quite good, so we have a really good chance of seeing real positives and not a very big chance of seeing a false positive. And here's just a summary of the, those data. So our controls right now, we're just at the beginning of that accelerated mortality phase of the lifespan curve. So our controls were still about 90% alive. I've just boxed in some of the real standouts uh, of things. We have uh, some treatments like ramipril and simvastatin. Ramipril is a blood pressure med. It's an ACE inhibitor. Uh, and simvastatin is a statin drug. It's an HMG-CoA reductase inhibitor. That's doing quite well. And everolimus is an inhibitor of, of rap, it's a, a, of a, it's the same as rapamycin. Maybe you saw the newspapers that rapamycin, only this is an orally available rapamycin derivative. It's working quite well as uh, also. Metaprolol and nevavolol are beta-2 adrenergic receptor uh, antagonists. Uh, OAA is, nobody really knows how OAA works, but there's a company down in San Diego, Benagene, that's, that's selling OAA, and, w and we were interested from their preliminary data, and so decided to test it. SAMe, interestingly enough, is doing quite well. Again, Simvastatin, this is the, st the statin drug. Uh, a product called Super Digestive Enzymes, which I think is from LAF, is doing quite well. And uh, this is trying to recapitulate calorie restriction by, tr by uh, chemically using drugs. And that, that group is doing quite well as, as well. So uh, my conclusions are that, that uh, EGF, which has been formerly not known to respond to calorie restriction, is an important source of the anti-cancer effects of calorie restriction. Um, we had the, uh, these gene profiling and these surrogate animals are good tools for uh, identifying compounds that may be useful 
uh, for delaying human, long, uh, human aging, sorry. And uh, I've shown you our data from the models. Thank you. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I don't know how long I was talking. 16 minutes? Uh, Steve, I have one question. With the compounds you tested, I saw you did some, some combinations. Yes. Uh, do, uh, have you, how extensive have you gotten into combinations? I mean, have you tested five, ten together? I mean, well, a couple hundred in some of those. Combined? Yeah. Not in addition to individually? Yeah. And I, I have to tell you, the combo groups are not doing that well in the mice. We tried to be a little more systematic in the flies, so we tried combining individual compounds that al uh, alone extend lifespan. And the thing we found is that they're not additive, at least so far. When we've added two, so far they've been only as good as the least effective single compound that we've added. Now, we, th we think we understand some of the reason for that. There's a, a paper published by a guy named Wang at UCLA who studies cancer drugs. And so he's taken eight cancer drugs and treated tumors with them and found the optimum concentration for each one of those. And then he adds them together and treats tumors. And the idea is to kill the tumor cells but not the normal cells. It turns out that the optimum concentrations for the combined treatments are always lower and are sometimes very different than the, you know, the ratios, than the optimum concentration for each drug alone. <clears throat> so when you just whip up a cocktail of compounds based on what you think the optimum is for each of those compounds alone, that's not necessarily going to be true for the, for the mixture. And so, with the flies at least, we can actually, uh, uh, there's an algorithm for how you change the, comp, uh, the concentration of each one of the compounds as you're reassaying over and over again for effectiveness. You can actually adjust the concentrations and find the optimum dose. But doing that in animals would take years, but doing it in flies, we can do it fairly quickly. But still, um, when you start combining things, old people, uh, you know, that start taking more and more meds end up with more and more side effects. It's a common problem. So uh, I personally would caution anybody who's just started taking supplements, huge amounts of them in big combinations, to be careful. Yeah. Uh, I guess I guess it works. Okay, um, you know, I'm Noel Patton with the uh, TA Sciences, and somebody was asking before what TA65 is. TA65 is a is a molecule that activates telomerase, and you you're testing two two groups of mice uh, that for the, that are ingesting uh, TA65, and you briefly showed me in the back of the room. Uh, and I wanted you to, if, if possible, to comment on that because we're not in the top list of those that are uh, really living a, a lot longer, but can compare those to the controls. Well, and al also, from my standpoint, what uh, I'm pleased about this, what I've seen so far, is that, that we're ahead of the control group, which means that TA65 is doing no harm to these mice. Uh, and furthermore, uh, we, we weren't really uh, hoping, we were hoping for, but not really expecting that TA65 would have a dramatic effect on these mice because, correct me if I'm wrong, they already have long telomeres. So this is not the ideal uh, model to be testing TA65 in. So if you could just comment. Uh, my comment is that none of those results are statistically significant, so I wouldn't uh, run to the bank with any of them, but you're absolutely right. They're outperforming controls so far, and they're certainly not toxic. In fact, nothing is really overtly toxic that we're testing here, although some of them uh, are, are doing a little worse than controls. Nothing could be, nothing's even close to statistical significance yet. Yeah. 
I <coughs> Yeah, uh, I was going to ask again about this unusual oxaloacetic acid from a company in San Diego. Um, what do we know about the chemistry of this, and what's the name of the company? <laughs> so I'm not here to do a plug for <clears throat> the company, but so I'll just call it OAA and say nobody knows. <laughs> <clears throat> it's very preliminary data. I wouldn't base my... I've never heard of Yeah. Okay. O OAA is a TCA cycle intermediate. I don't know if that tells you any more about it, but it's it's a it's a four carbon sugar that's important in the in the turning of the tricarboxylic acid cycle for hyd it, it, acetyl CoA. You know, it converts it to CO2 and creates reducing. Okay. Units. All right. Thank you, Stephen. Um, Stephen's going to be around at the break. We're out of times for questions.